Hello, guys. Uh, welcome back to Mezon African Motives. Uh, still on our revisions for mathematics, grade 10. Uh, as we are working on the trigonometry, guys, we shall be focusing on our trigonometric functions. Uh, this is an exam question that we have that uh, is very, very important for us to know or to understand. So there's question number six, the graphs of f of x, which is given as a sine of x. So this is our f of x, this graph that we are seeing, which is the graph of sine uh, of uh, a, uh, a sine of x. And also we are given gx, which is this g, uh, which is the graph of what? Uh, all right, so this is f of x, and uh, this is gx, which is corresponding to gx, which is the graph of uh, cos of x plus one. So this is given as uh, the cos of x uh, plus one. And we are given for the interval that is from uh, zero to 360 degrees, that is our x is going to be taken from zero to 360 degrees, from zero to 360 degrees. Uh, which is our x values, uh, the one that we are given there. All right, so the question that we are given on the first part was uh, 6.1, write down the value of a, all right, write down the value of a. So remember that a uh, from our graph of sine here, this is uh, from the graph of f of x, I'm just gonna answer it here, uh, that's 6.1. So from the graph of sine, we are given that this is uh, f of x, which is equal to a uh, sine of x. This is the graph of sine as we can uh, actually consider, and this is the normal graph of sine that we actually know this one having its maximum value at one and the minimum value at one. And we know that this A is going to represent the amplitude that you can actually take uh, as the difference, half of the difference between our maximum and the minimum value. So we can take that A from the amplitude calculation to say A is going to be half of the maximum value uh, minus uh, the minimum value in that case, all right? So simply it's going to be half of the maximum value, which is as our graph is going and it has to go down again. We are going to see that it reaches this point as the maximum and it goes down to this point as the minimum value of our graph, meaning to say our maximum value is corresponding at 0.1 on this graph. So that is one minus uh, the minimum value on the same graph is corresponding at uh, negative one. So this point here is at negative one. So we are going to take that as uh, a negative one, all right? So this is going to be a negative one like this, all right? So that means we are going to obtain half of minus and minus, that's a plus. So we're going to have two there, one plus one, which is two and half of two, uh, which is a one. So that means, uh, the value of a is equal to one. So it simply means that this graph is uh, f of x is equal to sine x, all right? f of x is equal to, suppose it's supposed to be one sine x, but one simply means we just have a sine. So like I said, this is a normal graph of sine that we are used to. You can even take that direct. That's why they say write, not calculate. Is something that you can just take direct if you understand your graphs that well. All right, then we need the range of G in this case, all right? Uh, that is on uh, 6.2, determine the range of G. So the range, we are now talking about the Y values, that is the range of G. So the Y values that affect G, as you can see, uh, this is the graph of G that we are going to have, which is the graph of cos of X plus one. So the Y values, they are limited. This is our Y axis. As you can see at the maximum, the Y value is at 0.2. And as it goes down, we are going to see that it is limited, the minimum value here, which is at what? Which is at zero. So it can only be taken in between these values, zero and two from zero to, to two. That is uh, the range in this case, that is the, uh, the values of Y. So meaning to say uh, Y is going to be taken uh, from, the minimum value, which is at zero, the maximum value, which is at two. So that is from zero to, to two. Uh, or you can just write this as y is greater than or equal to, because it is equal to zero, but at the same time, the y that we have is less than or equal to two. It can be taken in within zero and two. That is the values of y can only be taken. They cannot exceed two. They cannot be below two for this graph. All right, that is what we are simply saying there. All right, uh, let us consider 
uh, 6.3 determine the amplitude of G. So we are back again to the same story of this graph that we see uh, for G, the maximum value is a two there, it goes to zero then uh, back to that point. So remember what we said about the amplitude, we are simply talking about half of the maximum minus the minimum value. So we're going to have half of the maximum uh, minus the minimum value in that case. And we saw that from our range, we've got the maximum and minimum value, the maximum value being two, the, money, uh, the minimum value being a zero in that case, or you can take it from the graph zero at y and two as our maximum value. So it is going to be half of uh, two, which is our maximum value minus the minimum value, which is zero in that case. So two minus zero, that's a two and half of two is going to give us a one. So that means our amplitude there is just going to be a one. All right, 6.4, we are given for which values of X will F of X be greater than GX? All right, we need a condition where f of x is greater than gx. What does it mean? That is the question. Where f of x is greater than, all right, that is, is it greater than or greater, or there's greater than or equal to this also, and equal to the to g of x. All right, so if you are considering your functions uh, back to your normal algebraic functions, if this is a condition where f of x, you find f of x above gx because we are saying it's greater than. So this f of x is above uh, gx, all right? So we need a condition where we are going to have our f of x. This is our f of x, okay? This is the graph of f of x. So we are going to need where this graph is on top of what is on top of gx, on top of gx. So as we can see from the point is zero here, the graph of gx is the one that is on top on gx on gx yes on top up to this point the graph of gx is on top up to the point at what at 90 degrees from 90 degrees if you are to check gx is now below gx is now below and f of x is the one that is on top f of x is this one now that is on top so as you can see here f of x is on top from uh, 90 degrees at this point f of x is on top of gx, is on top of gx up to this point at 180 degrees. At 180 degrees, what is happening? f of x is now below and g of x, which is this one, g of x is now that is on top. As we need a condition where f of x is only above, that is on top of what? On top of gx. So it is on top of gx from 90 degrees up to 180 degrees. So that these are the values of X. Remember here, you are comparing uh, the X values. So whatever that you refer to, these are the X values. So meaning to say our answer is going to be X is greater than or equal to, remember we said from 90 to 180 degrees. So it is going to be greater than or equal to uh, 90 degrees, but less than or equal to uh, 180 degrees which you can write it uh, in the same way, just like what we wrote there on, uh, on Y to say, the X values are going to be taken from, our X values are going to be taken from uh, 90 degrees up to 180 uh, degrees. All right, so that is uh, where we have got our F of X being greater than or equal. To, and also uh, you are supposed to consider that it is what? equal to, then if it is equal to here, you're going to also put equal to, but if it is just greater than, you don't put this equal to, but uh, uh, that one is not a matter of effect when you write it this way, it does not affect your answers at all. All right, then 6.5, again, for which values of X is GX minus F of X is equal to two. All right, this one is an interesting question actually. All right, what are they trying to say? I'm just gonna write, this statement here so that you can understand uh, what are they trying to say uh, with the diagram here. So we need a condition where they are saying that we need a condition where G of X minus F of X is going to be equal to two. All right, G X minus F of X is equal to two. What does it mean? This is a condition, it's, it's, it's a difference between, they are saying the difference between the points that we have on GX, if you subtract 
them, there must be a difference of two to those ones of f of x. So if we check, it's like, uh, let us check from, from this point at, uh, at the same point, you are, you are referring at the same point. So you refer like at zero degrees. I want you to see what is happening at zero degrees. At zero degrees, uh, g is at point two, gx, it is at point two, all right? Minus f of x, f of x at zero here, f of x is at zero. So meaning to say the value here is what is zero. So it is going to be two minus zero. Two minus zero, what do you get? You get a two. So meaning to say at x, when x is zero degrees, when x is zero degrees, we are going to see a difference of two from gx minus f of x. Take note, what is subtracting another is gx minus f of x at the same point, at the same value of x at zero degrees, gx is at two. At zero degrees, f of x is at zero. So two minus zero gives us a two. All right, let us move on to 90 degrees here at 90 degrees. If we are to use the same concept at 90 degrees, you are going to see that gx, which is this one, gx, it's at point one there, it's at one. Minus f of x at, at the same point of 90 degrees, our f of x at this point is at one. So one minus one, it's a zero, not a two. So meaning to say this point does not satisfy what we need. So we move on to 180 degrees, it is the same. At this point, uh, gx, is, which is this one, it's at zero. For the value, it's at zero minus, f of x at this point is a zero. Zero minus zero is what? It's a zero. So this one does not satisfy again. So it is going to be out of our answers in this case. We move on to uh, 270 degrees. All right. Still our condition, guys, is that gx minus at 270, yeah, this is where we have gx. This is our gx, all right? I'm going to put my gx, this one. Yeah, this is our gx. So at 270 degrees, we are going to see that gx is corresponding at, at one. gx is corresponding at what? At one, so it is going to be one minus f of x at the same 270 degrees. What is happening with f of x? This is our f of x. So we're going to see that at uh, 270 degrees, f of x is at what? Is at minus one. So it is going to be one minus the value of f of x, which is which it corresponds at 270, and the value of, x, uh, uh, of y there is minus one, which is the value that corresponds at what? At 270 degrees. So if we subtract one minus minus one, it is going to give us a two. We have this value two. So meaning to say also at 270 degrees, we are going to obtain a difference of what? A difference of two. That is the question. That is how we answer this question. Let us move on to 360 and see what's going to happen here at 360 degrees. All right. At 360 degrees, where is our GX? Because we need always GX to be the first. All right. So GX, this is our GX here. It's now at what? At two. At 360 degrees here at the last point, it is at two. It corresponds here at what? At two minus uh, F of X. We are going to subtract F of X. At 360 degrees, where is our f of x? Our f of x is now back to, to zero. So this one is at this point, 360, it's, it corresponds to what? At zero. So it is going to be two minus zero, which is what? Which is two. So meaning to say we are also obtaining a difference of two from gx minus f of x at 360 degrees. So that's another value that we are going to have 300 and uh, 60 degrees. So these are the values of X, which satisfy a difference of two at zero degrees, at 270, at 360 degrees. So we're going to have our answers at zero, 270, and what? And uh, 360 degrees, all right? So that's our X here is going to be equal to uh, zero degrees uh, or 270 degrees or uh, 360 degrees, all these values, they satisfy the same condition that f of x, uh, I mean, gx minus f of x is equal to two. All right, then the last equation 6.6, .6, we are now asked here uh, that the graph of f of x is reflected across the x-axis, all right? So remember, if the graph of f of x is reflected across uh, the x-axis, it means that 
the graph, which is the new graph, which is H in this case. They want us to write the equation of the new graph, which is uh, uh, HX. So HX, when, re when we have a reflection in the X axis, it is going to be minus F of X like this. That This is a reflection in the X axis. You multiply because this is what happens. If you reflect in the X axis, any point on, on top, you are going to find it below uh, with the same point. If this is two, you are going to have this as negative two. All right. Any point below, it is going to be found on top. If this is negative two, you're going to see it on top. So it simply means the Y values, they are just being multiplied by what? By a negative when it is a reflection in the, in the X axis. So for every reflection in the X axis, it's a multiplication by a negative. So it means our HX is going to be minus uh, F of X. What is F of X? Remember our F of X here is uh, given as a sine X and we got the value of A, which is one. So it's gonna be one sine X, which is what? Which is sine X. So meaning to say our F of X there is what is sine X. So it's going to be minus uh, sine X. So that means HX is equal to minus uh, sine X, which is what? Minus F of X. It's a reflection in the X axis. You multiply the Y values, all right? If it is a reflection in the uh, in the Y axis, it's another thing that uh, uh, that we are going to have, uh, whereby the X values are the ones that are being affected. Each value of X is going to be affected by negative. So we are going to see it as uh, F of minus X. Whenever X is now multiplied by a negative, it means we are now talking about a reflection that is happening in the Y axis. So you need to know each and every type of a reflection that you are going to work with. Is it in the X axis? Is it in the Y axis? And uh, how does it affect uh, from the original, which is the object to the image object, uh, to the image of the graph that you're going to have, which is uh, uh, a tree graph. Sometimes they might ask you to draw a reflection of that graph. So you must be able to know those typical questions. So not to miss out, those typical questions, make sure that you become part of the family of Math Zone African Motives by subscribing to this channel uh, for more videos so that you won't be left out as we do revisions towards exam and past exam papers, which help you to prepare for your exams uh, that you're going to have in the future case.